couple. And do you know what the Lord did? He did that very thing. He raised up a young couple. And they're on deputation now to go and, and help David and spend some time with David probably the last years of his life uh, over there so they can get acclimated to that, uh, to that place. I don't think anybody in the world can get acclimated to that part of the world. And so it's so hot and so, so sad. And then <clears throat> another frustration that is, is happening is, is retiring missionaries. What is the local church going to do about retiring missionaries? Most uh, independent Baptist churches, they immediately when a missionary comes home from the field, whether he's retiring or what, they'll go there. We had one pastor call us and ask us when they expected one of our men to die with cancer so they could drop his support. Uh, and that's, that's so sad, isn't it? It's so sad. But we have some of our missionaries who are retiring, and back years ago, 20, 25 years ago, they were ta told to opt out on Social Security. At a time when we started our mission, they did not have a retirement program. And so what did they come back to the States? with nothing, not even a house, not even a car, and all they are depending on was that support that they were receiving that month. That, that month. So it's just a month-by-month month thing that they live in by faith. And I appreciate those missionaries. They, they, some of the decisions they made were not so wise, but praise the Lord, uh, at this present time, we have, we have a wonderful retirement program for every one of our missionaries, and that is so good, and we're so grateful to the Lord for it. And we advise our missionaries uh, to save as much as they possibly can for those, uh, for those uh, uh, declining years of their life. And as I mentioned last night, most of the missionaries that have been there in, in the, on the field 30 or 35 years, they just want to stay there. They just soon live there for the rest of their lives and die there. And we've had, we've had some of them die, and they want to be buried over there where God called them to go. And uh, we, we love those fellows. I mean... They're the best, and we learn so much. And I'm on the personnel committee, and when they come home, we have to have a reentry. That is, we want to clear up everything before they go out to the churches, and they go out with, a, with any hard feelings. That means that reflects on our mission board. So we want them to just tell us what they're thinking and, and how we're treating them. If we're not treating them right, we want to see what kind of adjustment we can make because we're servants of the missionaries, and we're holding the ropes for them. And so um, many of them had come back, and we learned so very much from them and the experiences they've had and what God is doing in their lives and, and how exciting it is to see. And here they are still, still uh, going on. We had one missionary that retired three times. He went, retired to Florida, got down there, and he just couldn't take it. He called us, and he said, is there somewhere in a Spanish-speaking world I can go? And he's uh, 80 I think he's 83 or 84, and so our, our uh, Latin American director told him, said, yeah, we got a place in Puerto Rico uh, uh, that you can go. He said, put me down for that. He said, I'm headed there. And so he's in Puerto Rico helping, helping a missionary now, and he's, he and his wife go out soul winning, door to door soul winning, and it's just a blessing to see people like that who are saying, hey, I've got a little more time left than what I got, what I got left. I'm going to give it to Jesus and let him use it for his glory. Another frustration that, is, that's, that we have is the rising cost of health care. Our missionaries, most of them, uh, pay somewhere around $1,100 a month for their, for their, for their health care uh, premiums. And so uh, we have to negotiate every year. And uh, this year, <coughs> we are working with, our, with, the, with, the, uh, with the insurance company to try to help them lower that cost and or keep it in the, in the area where they can live with. And they said we're going to raise it by 5%. And our mission, our mission, uh, our insurance takes care of every emergency that, that the missionaries have. We had a missionary in Mexico five years ago walk out one cool morning and, uh, and, and uh, to the Bible Institute to light the heaters. And little did he know that uh, the pilot light had went out and all night long uh, that uh, that room had been filled with gas, and it became an inferno, and uh, he was burned over 80 percent of his body, and uh, we sent, and our insurance company sent a helicopter in to pick him up 
and to bring him to Galveston, Texas, where he went to heaven. But we do have that type of protection when we have to have emergencies where missionaries have to come home from the field because of fear of their own lives, and we have ways that we try to help them do that. And that's the reason why our premium cost at, at that much, and we do our best to try to. And what, what we do also is that we're trying to keep the cost down to the, from the, for the missionaries uh, as low as we possibly can. And that's why we ask churches to support the mission board on a monthly basis, and that way we don't have to charge the missionary. We charge the missionary what they call a transaction fee, and that transaction fee is so low that uh, we, we, we figure that it takes about little less than three cents uh, per dollar delivery costs for $38 million this past year. I believe that we did as well as any uh, large mission board in America, but there, these are frustrations. The rising uh, health cost. And again, as I mentioned a while ago, we've, we have problems with returning missionaries. And, um, and so what we're trying to do right now and I want you to pray with us about this. And I know I've talked to Pastor on several uh, times since we've been here. We've talked about it. We talked about the Camp Bimmy. It's a boot camp for missionaries. And we bring kids in who feel the Lord may be directing them to the mission field if they're, if they're going into the 11th grade or junior year in high school or the college or even adults. We had a, we had a man who retired, a uh, professor, Ph.D. at the University of Georgia, and his wife was a, was a, a physician a pediatrician down in Macon, Georgia, and uh, they surrendered to go to the mission field. They came to Camp Bimmy, they got uh, trained in boot camp. Uh, they are in the Philippines now, and he's, uh, he speaks in his public schools there on, uh, on uh, creation and has many people saved, and she has clinics, and boy, they are having a lot of people come to the Lord in the Philippines. So age is not a, not a real problem. And so you, would you pray with us uh, about this? These are frustrations that we face. But then there's, there's, a, there's a frustration which all of us face. In 1999, I was asked by, by Dr. James Ray to go with them, uh, go with another group of, of 12 uh, uh, people to the city of Kresnyarsk, Siberia. That's 15 hours by plane from Moscow, east of Moscow. We landed in that city and and uh, they, they brought out, to, they came out to the plane with an old truck uh, that uh, had a trailer that looked like a cattle trailer. We hung on to that, got back into that city, and uh, we were there for the purpose of handing out, we had stored away 49,000 copies of the Word of God. And for the next 10 days, uh, we went down to the busiest part of the city and handed out Bibles where people would stand in line to get a copy of the Word of God. A 92-year-old man walked up to us and told us that he had never seen a Bible in his life. I was standing talking to about a 30-year-old young uh, man, and all of these people are just uh, uh, Caucasian people, and uh, and so and and been under communist rule. And and I handed a Bible to this guy. I said I, they told us say Biblia Biblia Blis Blatma. That's a Russian for Bibles, Bibles, they're free. And so we learned to say that. This guy came up to me and he said, Biblia? And I said, Biblia. He says, uh, Beast Blatt? And I said, Beast Blatt. And I was carrying on a conversation there in Russian. And, and, uh, and, and so he took the Bible and he held it in his hand and then he caught me. And I thought he was going to break my ribs. He just hugged me and hugged me and in, in Russian said, thank you, thank you, thank you for bringing it. And they, they walk off and then they start immediately reading it, reading the Word of God. And so we were able to handle it. But one of the frustrations that I had was that uh, it was in the summertime, and in that part of the world, they only have about two hours of darkness. Well, I was up at about 2 o'clock in the morning, and I walked out on a little stoop on the fourth floor of Hotel October, and I looked over that city, a city just like your city and any other city, um, where the men do the driving and women do the walking. I see a lot of the ladies walk, but the old men, no women drive cars. <coughs> they, I was going to say they don't have any accidents over there, but they do. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I looked out over that city, and I saw that city with only one Baptist church for one million people. 
And I reflected back to my home 